guys, welcome to Game Latte. Today's topic is hydrophobia prophecy. Before that though, I'd like to tell you what I'm drinking today. Today I'm drinking a piña colada right here. And I made it with milk instead of ice. And uh, so what you have is your rum, one ounce of rum. I put four ounces of Mott's uh, piña colada mix. And, and then I put the rest, I put milk and then some ice cubes because I didn't want to bother crushing the ice and all that. It's a very festive drink. It's very summery. However, I'm not drinking it because it's really hot over here where I live. It's actually not that nice. Our summer's been really crappy and, and cold. So I'm hoping that drinking pina coladas maybe I'll coax the sun to come and warm us up and maybe give the rest of you guys who are having extreme heat right now a little of, of, uh, of um, a little vacation there from, from the sun. So fingers crossed. So back to our topic, hydrophobia. This is a title by Dark Energy Digital. It was first released on the Xbox 360 on live. It was a downloadable game. I'm not sure how much it was then. Uh, right now, you can get it on Steam for the PC and on the PlayStation Network on the PS3. And I believe it's between $10 to $12 or $11.99, something like that. And uh, which I believe is a very fair price for what you get. Now, the unique thing about this game is the, um, is the water, basically. The, it's built on the hydro engine, which allows for the player to interact with the water you know, with hydraulic effects and all that. You can manipulate the water, you can swim through it, under it, whatever. That's really the basics. Um, you can drown your enemies and, uh, and, you know, you can use the water uh, as a puzzle element. This game is basically, it's, it's a kind of mix of an adventure and puzzle game and a little bit of combat. Though I have to say that the combat and uh, focus of this game is really probably its weakest point. It's not my most favorite part at all. And why that is, uh, the problems with the combat that I found, which, and I'm not combat oriented, so I'm not getting get into it as much as other people would, but I noticed that when I was you know, trying to shoot, getting out of cover was kind of a nightmare because you can't roll out of cover. You can't, you know, when you try to do it from the side, which is how I like to do it, you get stuck, you can't do it. You have to to get out of cover by walking in the front, by using your W key and going in front. And it's really kind of awkward and sticky and hard, and um, it's really not intuitive at all. So I didn't like the, the, the shooting aspect, I guess. You get um, this gun that you find that will allow you to stun enemies. Um, if you fire with the stun gun enough, you kill them. And then you also find all kinds of different bullets, which is nice. And uh, there's also uh, one bullet or um, bomb thing that you can throw at people and then you, you trigger it or you have to wait for, uh, for some time and then it explodes by itself. And that's pretty lethal, but it takes a while for the, um, the explosion to happen. So that's cool if you're trying to sneak around. The sneaking in the stealth isn't really that great either. You just crouch around. But it's really easy for the enemies to detect. So they really need to work the combat aspect of this game. If this was a full-fledged game, I think it would get much worse reviews than it had than it's getting right now. I think so far the reviews for this game have been from medium to high, and I think it's a lot to do with the fact that it is an indie title and by a very small company, and they have worked really hard at trying to polish this and make it better for the player. So I'm gonna get really big bonus marks for that. Now, what's really cool is, of course. The, the hydraulics, the, or whatever you call it, the, uh, the uh, controlling of the water. You, the whole point of the game, and this is said when you buy the game on Steam, it, there's a little blurb and it tells you that, you know, control the water and, and, um, and drown your enemies and all that and defeat your enemies with it. However, the really annoying part is you don't really get, you, you get a, a sort of water power eventually in within the storyline. But you don't get it till the end, till the end boss. So you don't get to practice with it. You don't get to really, um, you know, master the skill before you're thrown right into the main boss. And that, I think, was not a very good idea. They should have given you 
you know, those powers from the very beginning, especially since this is like a five or I think at the max nine hour game. It's not a very long game at all. And you're only paying what, 10 bucks for it or so. So that's a buck an hour, <laughs> but you know, so it, I, don't know, I think they should have really reworked the storyline so that you get to experience those powers from early on, especially since the game is so short. Um, the strengths of the game, though, it, it's a very interesting story. It's post-apocalyptic um, in the future where basically the population has increased so much that there's not enough resources on the planet to feed everybody. So people are dying of hunger and disease and all that. And you're on the you're an engineer on a boat that is is looking into uh, I'm not a cure, but I guess it's to, I'm not, they don't really explain what. The, the product they're working on is going to be, but it's supposed to be to help humanity survive, so to speak. However, it, it is in its early stages and it's really very unstable. And of course, as it happens, you, you, you get, you know, splashed with it. And so that's where your powers come from. So in that way, it's sort of very, you know, kind of Resident Evil-ish, kind of not, but, um, I don't know, I thought, I thought the story was very solid, it was very interesting. If it wasn't for the story, I would probably be like, eh, this isn't a very good game, but I enjoy it. Uh, I'm hoping that they are working on a sequel for this game, because I would definitely get it. I really enjoyed it, I really enjoyed the, um, oh, the puzzle part of this game was probably its, its biggest strength. Uh, you have to really look around your environment and use the environment to solve the puzzles to get out of the level that you're in or the room that you're in. And in that sense, as a puzzle game, I found that it's it's very solid. It's a very solid game that way. As an adventure combat game, not so much. But if you're playing it for the puzzles and to find out more about the story, I think you are you might really, really enjoy this game. So also, visually speaking, this is a beautiful game, absolutely gorgeous. I was actually astounded when I first uh, downloaded it, because I saw it was coming out on Steam in late May, and I was like, oh, I've got to get this, it looks gorgeous, and it's only about 10 bucks, so I was like, totally getting it. And, and, I, and I, I first got into it, and I started playing, I was blown away by how beautiful it was. So that was, for me, that was definitely a very nice surprise. And I knew by the screenshots it was going to be nice. But it's a lot nicer when you're actually into it. And I really enjoy that. I really like how smooth it felt. A lot of the bugs were addressed and ironed out. Um, there were still a few things. For example, I got stuck in some buildings or some structures, I think, two or three times during my play. So, but to me, I didn't find that those bugs really killed the enjoyment for me, all I had to do was restart and the things that the game saves enough times that if you die or if you get stuck somewhere you can restart from an earlier point and it's not really that far off from where you were so that way that's really really good so yeah I think that's pretty much it for Hydrophobia I you know for how much it is I definitely recommend it because I mean you're not breaking the piggy bank um, however don't have too high of expectations. Expect that you're going to have a few problems. The combat is going to maybe frustrate you. There is a challenge mode, a challenge um, chamber, I guess. I haven't tried it out, but you do get more for your money that way if you want you know, to keep going for your trophies. I believe there's 13 trophies, Steam achievements, I guess, to be had in this game. So you can go into the room and then you know, try to to get all of those if you are an achievement junkie or collector. So that was great. And yeah, that's it, guys. I hope you're enjoying your summer and it's not too hot for you or too cold. I mean, it's either one of the or the other around here, apparently, <laughs> right now. And happy pina colada. Bye. I drank. Pots and pots and pots and pots of strong black coffee Trying to keep my sleepy soul awake